okay, here I go, being more consistent about posting bonus pods slash freebies slash whatever you want to call them. I've made a list of things that I would like to discuss with you, and there's a few things, okay? Um, and then if we have time, we'll do icebreaker questions, and then eventually I would like to have this with, you know, guests and stuff so that people can have a little bit more interaction and communication, especially since it's free and it's fun. Um, but anyway, okay, first things first, um, I think I might have talked about this a tiny bit in the last uh, episode episode, but my idea of success. I am really trying to figure out how to change my idea of success. It's so tied to money. It's so tied to how I can pay my bills. And if I am, you know, well known enough, if people know the podcast and things like that, which leads me to the next thought is that, um, again, I think I said this last time, but there have been so many instances and this is not a braggy thing. I promise you that it is not braggy because I don't feel like I'm bragging at all. I am just stating facts. People, I would say like two or three people have, uh, you know, either face to face or via text when they've been catching up with me have been like, oh, my gosh, your podcast is real. Like, it's so good. And it's so like, you know, I guess that real is the only word that they can think of to like make it be a little bit more um I don't know what the thought is, but basically they're like, no, but your podcast is like a true, like real thing that you do. Like this is really successful. And in my head, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I don't get paid at all for this. Um, there's, there's a lot of work that goes into this and I don't get jack shit <laughs> except for joy, which is a form of payment. But you know what it's not to me, which it needs to be is a form of, su- of success. Hello? Uh, yeah, I just feel like everybody else thinks that I And you are a success except for us. The person that doesn't think they're successful is actually most of the time very successful. And it's because I am relating it, again, to money. I don't make money doing this podcast. Uh, You can always Venmo me, Holly X Constant. Thank you so much. But I don't make money doing this podcast. So how can it possibly be classified as a success? That's That's not right. That's incorrect. That's false. That's lying. You're lying to me. But it's not because to them, I've been putting in the work. I've been putting in the time. They see how much I post. They see how much I uh, actually do the work as far as, you know, doing the podcast itself and editing and, you know, getting really exciting guests. I think the guests are a huge part of why they think it's it's a success. Uh, And that is amazing that I've had incredible guests. I'm so lucky. Uh, So I just feel like that is something that I am really trying to work on in the sense that this is not, money doesn't equal success. Success doesn't equal money all the time. Um, It might equal security and it might equal less stress or something because you're able to pay all your bills. But other than that, um, that's not, you know, what it's really about. Um, So anyways, well, at least that's what I'm trying to kind of break the habit of thinking of it as. And so if anyone has any tips, I would love that. Um, Second thing I want to talk about is the Olympics. I am obsessed with that opening ceremony. That's really all I've watched apart from Simone Biles clips and like the random um, air gun thing (laughs) where like people are have funny stances. Uh, But yeah, Simone Biles is queen. And that opening ceremony was amazing. I feel like the way that they incorporated both art and culture into sports and competition, but also like we're all in this together vibes, uh, was beautiful lighting the, uh, you know, the torch that was wonderful. Um, the, you know, animation part of it, the minions were in it. That was crazy. You know, like, I just feel like they really put in so many different things to go, uh, to really draw people in and to make people feel unified. And I thought that was beautiful. So just want to say that about the opening ceremony. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And if you know what I am referring to in subtext, I hope that you get it. If not, I loved the Olympics opening ceremony, every part of it. Okay. Um, we talked about money a little bit, like the success part. Okay. So I saw on Facebook, no, not Facebook. I saw on TikTok this thing called the focus wheel and it's not quite manifestation, but it kind of like borders that, but it's more about what you have now and changing your brain chemistry. And I have seen so many TikToks on this, meaning that my algorithm is totally about like, how do we fix your level of success and how do we fix uh, your brain chemistry so that you get what you want coming to you? Okay. But I'm just going to read to you what I wrote. Okay. And I'll show you this. Um, I'm probably not going to post a picture of it, but I will 
you know, maybe post a video or something. But basically, you write a thing that you know is not true. A statement that you know is not true, but you really wish it to be true. So, uh, my statement is, I am debt free. That is so not true, but I want it to be true. Okay? So, and then around that circle, you're supposed to list things that you know to be true. Um, and that is supposed to cha not change your brain chemistry, although I guess it does that too. But like, you're supposed to take what you don't believe or what you do believe rather with all these statements and transfer it to the thing that you don't believe and make it true. Now, it, there are actual neuroscientists and things that have like talked about this, I think. So look, if they know, fine. But I just want to share with you this part. So I am debt free is the focus, is the circle that I want to focus on. Okay. So I really want to be debt free. But I think I need to change that sentence, which is why I wrote it this way, as I am debt free. Not money will come to me, but money comes to me. Does that make sense? It's more present tense, more believing in it. Um, but the things that I do believe, because I don't believe I am debt free, but I want to believe that. The things that I do believe slash are true are I have a steady, consistent paycheck. I do. Um, that is true and real right now. I am making payments every single paycheck. <laughs> In fact, pretty much all of my paycheck goes to my debts right now. So that's fun. Uh, I will be getting paid from, oh, a paid show in September and October. So I'm getting some payments from that. That can also go towards my debt slash just life and not feeling as stressed. It's ne uh, the, another thing that I do truly believe and I was thinking about a lot today was it's never, uh, it's really never as bad as it seems. And it's not. It's really not. When, you, when I think about everything else that I could be going through slash suffering slash all these things, and this is not to say that I can't feel my feelings. You know me and you have heard, you know, seven minutes of it, but it is, I know my feelings and I feel my feelings a lot, but it's really never as bad as it seems in my head, you know? So that is a true thing that I hope to transfer to I am debt free, quote unquote. Um, a second one, again, these can be really general, um, from what I have learned, but se uh, second one, I meant next one. Uh, I'm not starving. Uh, that is true. I am not starving and I won't be starving. Uh, I have at least, and I know that this isn't like, I don't know that I really need to expand upon it, but, and I'm not going to, honestly, I'm not starving. I'm not starving. There are people in this world and in our country that are starving, that are worse off. And that is something that I would like to remember, that I do remember every single effing second that I think about, you know, how decent I do have it. I have a really wonderful life. I literally wrote that sentence because that's true. I do believe that I have a wonderful life. I have a really great setup here. Uh, and although I'm not debt free and although I don't believe yet that I'm successful, even though logically, I guess I know I am, uh, I have a wonderful life. And the fact that I do have a job now, the fact that I have clothes in my closet, the fact that I have food in my fridge, that I have, you know, two cats that love me and I love them. I have a mom and a sister that I just adore and I'm so grateful and lucky for them. You know, those kinds of things. I have a wonderful life. And that is... So that means more success and gold than any actual money could, in my opinion. So I have a wonderful life. The next one is um, the things I did spend money on were worth it. That is something I really need to reckon with as well because I keep looking back sometimes and I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have spent my money on that. I shouldn't have gotten a new thing. I shouldn't have gotten this, that, the other. I don't really spend money on like pleasure, uh, to be honest with you. Like I do go out to um, the bar every now and again with Aaron, my good friend. Um, we like to explore new places, but you know, I don't really like, it's not like I'm going out twice a week or even twice a fucking month. You know what I mean? Like and I am going to um, some places this month because I want to celebrate my birthday, God forbid, that I didn't get to really do last month. But I, I, you know, everything I spent money on was worth it. And remember, I had like that shoulder injury, which is getting better. Um, 
I spent a lot of money on like, you know, this new office chair and pillows and, you know, things like that. So I definitely know that it was worth it to invest in that because that was the worst pain I've ever had in my entire life. And I really do not want to go through that again. So it was worth it. And I believe that. Uh, next one, I have an apartment that I can pay rent on. I can pay my rent. I can. Uh, it, I'm still in debt because, well, whatever. But I, you know, I can pay my rent. And that's important. Okay. The last thing that I have so far is that uh, catering, my second job, and one of the reasons why I am feeling this strain is because I used to have uh, two to $300 extra per month, if not a little tiny bit more, um, from catering because I would cater two, three times a month and it pays well. And, uh, they have catering shifts have really taken a hit because, uh, the winter, I mean, sorry, the summer is just awful. Uh, we worked, I even worked a shift outside cause my, that's the thing. Most of the ceremonies are outside and then the thing, the, cer- uh, the reception is on the inside, which is great. But I worked a shift where the actual reception itself was outside as well at the end of June. Oh, wow. I mean, I am shocked that it was not more people. There were not more people that like passed out or just left early like it was terrible not only was the heat awful and humidity was just terrible 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 the inside like the outside tent was not air conditioned no like ventilation kind of vibes also um it was on like this really big steep slope and I'm sorry I'm just gonna say it it was at Cheekwood uh if you're familiar with the Nashville area and this I'm I'm assuming that they have multiple places in fact I think I actually I know that they have multiple places where they hold ceremonies uh and weddings in general this was not it you don't want to do this um and the place where they had like the cocktail hour was was actually pretty decent because they had some fans it seemed like there was some shade going on um but shade did not matter, actually, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, especially like when the sun went down. It was still humid as hell. We were in our long pants and socks and long sleeve shirts and all these things. And the tent area was positioned as such that there was a far side of the tent that you still had to carry all your trays and cups and, you know, uh dirty dishes and things like that all the way to the inside, which was like 100,000 steps. I think I actually walked. I think it was seven eight miles maybe that evening and sweat it off even more like are you kidding and I had like really painful chafing my thighs chafe all the time whatever um so anyways but yeah that was rough and even not just for us but I felt like for the guests like there were some older women and ladies and like men and in their suit jackets and I'm just like you guys and the grass was not necessarily super even anyway look sorry this is not to shade cheekwood it's a beautiful property however uh my point is that catering has stopped for most of july pretty much all of august uh there were supposed to be some events in august but it they got canceled and blah, blah, blah um so i am really feeling that strain because i have bought those extra things and i'm feeling the strain of not having 300 extra dollars a month so looking into other avenues, I have um, been approved to start doing Rover, which is so cute. I want to snuggle all the cats and the, and the dogs. Um, I'm not a dog person, but I love dogs. Um, I'm definitely more of a cat person. Uh, and what's scary, though, is that's what what's kind of nerve wracking is that I had um, been requested to board an animal, a dog, which means that they would be, you know, in my apartment. I'd watch them for however long the, uh, the pet parent was away. Um, but I forgot that I had checked uh, like medium dogs too. And I just don't think medium dogs are going to work with my two cats that I have at home. Um, I, you know, cause this dog was a little bit like moderate to high energy and I just, I don't know how that would work. Um, apart from like, I don't know me, uh, closing them in like, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, so maybe small dogs could work. Um, even that, I'm not sure I should risk it. But I do think small dogs could work because I want them to be friends with dogs. I want them to get along with dogs. Most dogs love cats, but cats are just so freaked out by them. So I think if we can figure something out, that would be the way to go. But anyway, so that's what's been going on with me. Um as far as Rover and the payment part of it goes. But anyway, so that's my focus wheel. Um, I'm sure I'll think of more things that are true that I can kind of hopefully convert into uh, 
believing that I am debt free. Um, okay. And then the other like therapy thing that I've been finding is they ask you always, how would it feel to be whatever you have in your middle circle? So say in your middle circle, you, um, I am married. Although I don't know if that's like <laughs> the best one ever, just because like you're sufficient on your own and that's not going to like deter if you can pay your rent. But either way, maybe that's your goal. Who I'm not, I shouldn't be judging. So maybe you wrote in there, I am married or I have a committed relationship or whatever you f- find is your, um, something that you really want. Okay. But you don't believe, but you can get it. Um, and they ask you, how would it feel? So how would it feel to be married? How would it feel to have a committed relationship? Um, or say, you know, new car, I have a new car is your goal. Like how would it feel to have a new car? So I wrote, how would it feel? to say I am debt free and really believe it. And that's what's really hard for me in therapy when uh, therapists have asked this before, because I'm always like, I don't fucking know. That's why I'm here, because I'm trying to get there. I have no idea what it would be like to be debt free. No idea. I've lived this way my entire adult life. I have no thought about or idea of like how it would be to not look at my bank account and see, you know, negative or whatever. So I really challenged myself to just imagine, just use my imagination. And the and I really wrote keywords um, as far as how it, it would feel. So the first one was liberating. Like I would just feel liberated from chains of money ruling my life. Um, I'd feel joyful and happy because I know they say that money can't buy happiness, but I just don't think those people have been poor. So joyful and happy. I'd feel free. I'd feel a sense of freedom. I'd feel lighter. That word came to me and it really resonated. I would feel lighter, like my shoulders would drop. I would feel (sighs) deep breaths. Um, Stress relieving. I think I'd feel healthier. I wrote that down. I feel, I, yeah, I think I'd feel healthier, like stress does some crazy shit to you. And I think I'd feel less uh, pressure and stress, cortisol, whatever, um, stress chemicals are bad for you. I mean, some stress is good, obviously, but I just think I would feel healthier. Um, and then I would also, you know, that led to sleeping better. I think I would sleep better and just have a little bit less to think about as far as, you know, constantly questioning, how am I going to do this? You know? And I have done my budgets. I've done the logistical part of it, which if you've been listening at all, you know that that's very me. Um, So maybe now I need to try to have the balance of like just relax a little, follow the plan, uh, be a little bit woo-woo with it, be a little bit delusional with it, and think that I am debt-free. Money comes to me. Um, And obviously, like I said, like I have the logical side of it. I have everything as far as, you know, the A plus B equals C part of it and, you know, budgeting honestly out till like September so that I'm aware of when and how long this is going to fucking last because it's so annoying. But uh, I think this is going to be good for me to just try to challenge myself every day, every morning, maybe. Maybe I don't have to journal every day, but I just like have a meditative moment for like five minutes, two minutes. I don't know. To just breathe into and breathe life into money comes to me. I am debt free. And maybe, I don't know, just talking about it, maybe like, maybe it's not about believing that, but just not letting it rule over you. Maybe that's what it's about. I'm not really sure. Because something that I really liked about this was that it's more on the focus part of it as opposed to manifestation because I, and I mean, it's a little bit of both obviously because I'm saying things that aren't true that I hope to be true at one one point, but I do want to be happy right now. Like right this like second, I would like to at least be content and peaceful, happy and joyful might be a little bit too big of an ask, right? You know, right this second, but I, I I don't want to necessarily keep waiting until like, well, when this happens, I will feel better. And that, to me is what manifestation has looked like a lot of the times. And I know that's not always true, but that's what I think that this focus part is doing. It's like giving me a little bit more of of an equation, more of a, like a delusional equation, if you, (laughs) um, to focus on the things that I want and that I know can be true, but just aren't yet. Uh, and so that's kind of what I've been going through lately. Um, 
like I said, too, this is random. I'm switching topics kind of, but um, my shoulder does feel better. And I practiced a workout yesterday um, and it, and I did not focus on my shoulder. I really only focused on my lower body. Um, so like a lot of squats and stuff. And I did five pounds. I just I used to be able to do 20, 25 pounds on these fucking workouts. Now I can only do five. And listen, that is better than nothing. Even no weights would have been better than nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to start back up somewhere. So they say you have to start somewhere. Sometimes you have to start back somewhere. Does that make sense? Like you have to start somewhere, but like they don't ever talk about you might have some setbacks and then you have to start again. So anyways, um, I think that is a really positive note to end on. Um, just because you don't think you're a success doesn't mean that you're not. That's what I have to say. And that is what I will be trying to channel and put my energy into not only myself, but also to whoever is listening to this and to know that we are doing our GD best out here. That's all we can do. Whatever your goal is, whatever your dream is, like it can happen. It just hasn't yet. And that's why it's so frustrating because it's so possible. You know what I mean? Um, and so I really just want to be delusional and I'm going to try my best to be delusional with you. Okay. But also, of course, have a little bit of logistics in it as well. But um, yeah, thanks so much. Um, yeah, we didn't get to the icebreakers, but I'll do icebreakers the next time because I'm sure I'm going to need some other <laughs> content uh, to do. So um, yeah, and uh, also honorable mention to this shirt because I wear this green collar shirt every single day. And <laughs> not really, but I wear it all the time. I, in fact, I wore it to the last bonus pod and I wear it on a lot of my auditions because it matches my eyes and it makes my face look nice. So listen you got to do what works but thank you so much for listening don't forget to follow uh subscribe all the things instagram tiktok uh yeah you can always venmo me at holly x constant so don't ever forget that if you're listening <laughs> okay well let me know if there's anything any other topics that you want me to talk about but other than that i'll see you next time and i'll be thinking praying manifesting focusing for you too okay bye